People tend to think that brighter is better, but what they don't really realize is that most of our screens are actually not turned all the way up in its brightness. There's often times we, we view things on our cell phones or on our iPads or on our computers where the screen's actually not turned up all the way bright. And yet at the same time, if we're watching a Hollywood film on that same screen, we never think like, man, that doesn't look that good. Alrighty, video two, kind of. Air tag battery is low, WTF. Got my lab on today. I just, honestly, I just didn't have a lot of time tonight. I didn't want to set up my boom pole, so sorry. It's kind of an eyesore, but it is what it is. Hey guys, it's Shane again. I'm a DP and cinematographer here in Southern California. Now today I want to talk to you guys about one of the things that I think is really important as a cinematographer, and that is getting a really cinematic looking image. Now there's a lot of things to do about getting a cinematic image, but I just want to talk to you about one of those things today, one of those attributes. And I think it's one of the things that's really overlooked by a lot of videographers and DPs and cinematographers. Well, actually I take that back. It's mostly looked over by videographers. A lot of DPs and cinematographers already understand this, and that is exposure. Now exposure is one of the most important things about making a frame or an image or a video or a film, whatever you want to call it, look cinematic. The thing is, is that oftentimes as cinematographers and videographers, we just overexpose an image because we're just kind of trained to believe that brighter is better. And I just want to argue that that is not necessarily true. Actually, most Hollywood films are shot a lot darker than you'd think. Like oftentimes white is not at 100%. Oftentimes white is at 70 or it's at 80 IRE and not 100. Especially for me in my career as a wedding videographer first, where in like every wedding video ever, the couple wants it to be really bright and airy and look beautiful and look golden. They want that golden hour. They want the really bright look. People tend to think that brighter is better, but what they don't really realize is that most of our screens are actually not turned all the way up in its brightness. There's often times we, we view things on our cell phones or on our iPads or on our computers where the screen's actually not turned up all the way bright. And yet at the same time, if we're watching a Hollywood film on that same screen, we never think like, man, that doesn't look that good. Or if we're watching a TV in the middle of the day and it's really bright outside and the TV's not that bright compared to the windows, if it's a Hollywood movie, we're not really thinking like, man, this doesn't really look good. That's because the bottom line is that our eyes don't really perceive the brightness as being high quality, what we actually perceive as being high quality is the tonality of the image. Now, what I mean by that is it's the dynamic range within the image. It's making sure that the highlights aren't clipped and it's also making sure that the shadows aren't too dark. One of the worst things that you can do as a videographer and cinematographer for your image is to overexpose it and to clip the highlights. Once those highlights are clipped, to me, there's nothing that looks worse. There's nothing that makes it look more video-y than when the highlights are clipped. And especially the colors on the image. Many cameras, the colors will just go wacky when they're getting clipped. The yellows will become greener. You know, blues will become purplier. The colors just go crazy when they're getting clipped. And one of the things I've learned, especially shooting on the GH5, is that Underexposing a little bit will actually help to preserve the colors and to preserve the dynamic range, especially with the GH5, a camera that I think is really limited in its dynamic range, especially with today's like R5, the A7S3, FX3, like those cameras have insane dynamic range compared to the GH5. And one of the things I've done to help the GH5 and its lack of dynamic range is to actually underexpose a little bit to help save those highlights. But even when I'm shooting with and editing footage from like the A7S III, the FX6, the Red Komodo, I'm trying to not overexpose it. Because even on those high dynamic range cameras, the image won't look good if it's overexposed. I think those images really shine when they're actually a little bit underexposed and whatever the brightest part of the image is, isn't super bright. Now, of course, there's times where you have to make compromises, especially if you're running gun shooting. There's times where you have to let the window be a little blown out or you have to let the sky be a little blown out. Of course, there's those times always, even on upper end cameras, even on cinema cameras like RED cameras or FX6s, there's just times where you have to let it be blown out even with all that dynamic range. But my biggest point honestly is just to encourage you to not be afraid to underexpose. 
Don't be afraid to go moody. Moody is better in my opinion because it preserves the colors. There have even been some shoots I've been on where I'm shooting out in broad daylight and I'll still underexpose. There's often times where I'll look at the sky on lumetri scopes and I'll bring the sky down to 70 IRE. One of the things I've found is that if you maintain a white point throughout the whole sequence of 70 or 80 IRE or whatever you choose or even 90 IRE, as long as you maintain that the whole time, people won't notice. When they actually notice is when there's the whole clip is this and all of a sudden there's a really bright one that actually reaches 100 IRE and gets clipped. But if you just keep all of the clips consistently at the same brightness, especially those highlights, then people won't notice that it's actually not 100% bright. And that's what works to your advantage because then you can preserve all that color, you can preserve all that dynamic range. Okay guys, I basically rambled about this for a few minutes and I hope you get something out of it. Again, I'm just trying to encourage you. It's 2022 and I'm still shooting on the GH5 and I feel like I'm still getting great results with it because I'm underexposing it. And yes, that is because I'm having to make up for its lack of dynamic range, but I've still had some potential clients tell me that they think I'm shooting on a red, which is crazy because I'm actually shooting on like a $1,500 camera. To be fair, they're not, they're not cinematographers, they're not DPs, they have, they have no clue, you know? <laughs> like, it really is about exposing properly. It really is about just saving the highlights. And bonus tip, it's also really about making sure you have good white balance as well. But even in saying that, like, man, the A7S III, the FX6, like, their 10-bit codec is just so robust that even if the white balance is pretty far off, you can, you can save it quite a bit. But man, that red Komodo. That red Komodo, man, it's just so good. I wish I could just own it and shoot everything on it and just fill up five terabytes of hard drive space every single time I shoot. All right, guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you agree with me or not. Honestly, there's, I'm sure there's some amazing DPs and cinematographers out there that probably would disagree with me on some level or with some of my methodology there. And I'd love to hear why. Like, honestly, I'm still looking to learn and grow at the same time. So yeah, please comment with any thoughts that you might have. That'll do it for me. Peace.